here I am on the old cold attic, if you can call it that, where all my old junk is. Once again, this is a video about this old piece of junk. Well, it's not a piece of junk, it's pretty darn quick, I must say. This is the HP Vector VL600, made in 2000. And it's now running Windows 98 Second Edition. But that's not what I'm going to install. It's a DVD. Pretty friggin' interesting. It has Windows Fundamentals for Legacy PCs on it. That's what I'm going to install. Even though this machine itself is capable of running XP, if I put back the 512 megs of RAM, but I'm not planning on that, because I do want to keep running this for legacy purposes. And Windows Fundamentals will help me do that. And it uh, has a little bit better support and it runs quicker than XP. So, I'm like, eh, what the hell, I'm just going to try it. So what I'm just going to do, I'm just going to turn it on, put the DVD in, and we'll see what happens. Counting the memory. It always seems to hang at this point, but it's just the IDE controller trying to catch up. It has three IDE devices, so it just takes a while. Hopefully it's set to boot from DVD, or else I'm just going to have to make a big, big cut in this video. There we go. There we go. It's a very old Samsung drive. It's from 2003, but if you look at the yellowing of it, it doesn't look like it's from 2003. It looks like it's from freaking 98 or something. But, man, it works. Even though it only reads DVDs anymore and no CDs anymore, but that's why I've got a CD drive slash burner. So... But yeah, if I really wanted to burn CDs, I might as well just use my iBook, because it's a little bit more versatile on that. And this machine. And quite a bit faster, too. Hmm, I'm trying to figure out whether my keyboard is working or not. Seems like it isn't. So I might have to replug that. That might be a fun job. Ooh, that's a nice washed out logo. Copyright 2005. Alrighty. Any key for a command prompt? No, thank you. Ah, yes. We have a working keyboard. We have a working mouse too, that would be nice. Yep, all working. Yeah, I've got this PS2 adapter in the back, and I wasn't sure whether, what, whether it was in the keyboard or the mouse port, I don't know. But it turns out it wasn't a keyboard port after all, so that's why I plugged it in there. Because I do remember that under Windows 98, it was kind of picky where, where I put it. If I put it into the second USB port, 
keyboard wouldn't work. If I put the mouse in it, it would just work fine, so I don't I know the port is fine. With this whopping USB 1.1 speeds. Extra speeds up to a megabyte. Woohoo. Uh, I want to set up Windows on my computer. Yes, what else would I want to do? <laughs> Damn. Uh, no, I don't have the answer file. Yeah, it is on a USB key I've got near me, but I didn't burn it to the disk, so... What is left to me to do is now put in the product key. Okay, that's done. Default input language. English, United States. Uh, let's put the Dutch Netherlands. Uh, time zone, Amsterdam. Formats. Put at the Dutch. Geographical location and stuff. Well, that would be... Scroll, scroll, scroll. Netherlands, the. Very inspiring. Uh, typical, full, custom. Let's see what uh, what they offer on this. Might be somewhat interesting. It's definitely seeking. Let's see. Okay, it seems we can add additional driver support to get all the drivers needed to automatically install all computer peripheral support XP Service Pack 2. Well, supposedly all this hardware used to work with the XP RTM already. So I don't know whether I should actually accept that. Windows Messenger, of course, we don't want that. Media Player. Um, and this PC, I'm gonna say no. Language support, complex language support, no, Dutch is not complex. Um, Internet Explorer, no. <clears throat> That's a very definite no. Uh, additional drivers, if we put that in, it takes up another 150 meg. Uh, you know what, we're just going to put that in, just to make sure how hard we're detected properly. We only have one partition, 19 gigs. That's the 98 partition. I formatted it as FAT32 before I even installed Windows 98 on it, so... We're just gonna have to wait. Alrighty, we've got some unpartitioned space. And now we've got partition 1 of 19 gigs, and now we can actually install on it. Gonna leave it NTFS. Let's not mess with the cluster size too much, because quite frankly, if we're gonna put it at 496, we're gonna create a lot of slack space on the drive. If we're just gonna put on small files, I'm not planning on storing ISO images and stuff on this. If I would, I would most definitely crank it up to 4K. But I'm just not going to do that right now. Because really, that's quite important. Actually, if you have a newer PC, and you have a storage drive with only big files on it, it's probably best to just, if you have formatted it with a large cluster size, because slack, sp <coughs> slack space doesn't really matter quite a bit if you have big files. So in fact, this lag space uh, basically comes from the fact that you have a large cluster size with small files. If you have a 1K file and you have a cluster size of 4K, one file will occupy the full cluster of 4K. So you basically create 3K of slack space per file. So if you have a million of those files, you know that that's up to about 3 gigs of slack space. That's what they did with FAT16, because FAT16, as is, could only allocate about uh, 30 megs of a drive. So they upped the cluster size to about 32K, which effectively made the drive a maximum of 
two gigabytes. But uh, yeah, converting it to back to FRET32 with a much larger, much smaller, I mean, uh, cluster size, that would bring down your drive usage by quite a bit. Um, reformat, quick format. Mm. A lot of important stuff on it, so if I put ever put out to drive, I will just perform a clean wipe or just destroy the thing altogether. I'm just gonna think that this drive is gonna be dead before I chuck the PC out, so. Um, okay, we need a admin password for this. Interesting. Alright, it seems like enter a strong password. Oh great, Windows Server type requirements for the password. <laughs> Let me try that again. Okay, second time did work. Um, okay, network settings. I don't have any network hardware hooked up to it aside from an Ethernet card, but you know, I don't really use that thing. Uh, yep, it's in the work group, work group. No domains here. And here's all the finalizing setup information. And we're gonna install. You know, the setup is really looking simplistic. I mean, look at the pixels on that. And I don't mean on the video. <laughs> You know, really, it's really pixelated, and it's like running 800 by 600 mode here on this 1020 or 1280 by 1024 flat panel. Uh, I remember this uh, this panel. I used to game on this thing actually <laughs> for about uh, I think about two and a half years on it. Mm, longer actually, since 2008 till about. Early last year, so that's that's more than three years actually. And on my last year, I don't mean 2012. <laughs> I mean 2011. So yeah, that's the annoying thing. I'm not really feeling like it's uh, 2013 already. I'm still thinking in 2012. I mean like 2011 for me in the last year. But uh, yeah, anyway, it's going to copy all the OS components and. Uh, this will be the end of part one of these videos. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, stay tuned for part two, which I will probably upload the same day anyway. <laughs>